Yesterday, we made a quick video outlining the news that Apple is planning to add lossless audio and spatial audio to Apple Music for Apple Music subscribers at no extra cost, and that's gonna be coming out next month. Now, we didn't go too far in depth because well, there was a lot of vague answers and misinformation floating around about how lossless audio can be played back and what devices would support this new feature. I urge you all to check out the guide in the description down below as that will be constantly updated whenever new information comes out. But let's just start right away with what devices are compatible. And yes, it is true, Apple's very expensive AirPods Max do not support lossless audio. But this isn't anything that people should be upset about or complaining about. As far as we know, there are no headphones that can play back lossless audio via Bluetooth, and AirPods Max are Bluetooth headphones. The technology is just not there yet. For those who need a very, very brief refresher on what exactly lossless audio is, after a track is compressed and then decompressed, the audio will be identical to the audio that was actually recorded by the artist. This will help preserve a lot of detail, sound quality, etc., which just isn't the case with other music files. Other streaming services like Tidal and Amazon Music offer a lossless tier, and it's not a new concept by any means. Now, according to Apple, lossless audio on Apple Music can be listened to on an iPhone, an iPad, a Mac, and an Apple TV. None of Apple's headphones, however, work with lossless audio, nor does the HomePod or HomePod Mini. The entire AirPods lineup is limited to Bluetooth AAC codec and simply cannot support the ALAC format. Even when connected by a physical wire, the AirPods Max won't support true lossless audio. It's not clear if ALAC support is something that Apple can add in in the future because technically Bluetooth 5.0 should support higher bit rates, nor is it known if Apple plans to add support to future audio devices. Now, according to an article on The Verge, an Apple representative did say that when you play a 24-bit, 48 kilohertz lossless track from an iPhone using your AirPods Max and using both the lightning cable and the lightning dongle, the audio is converted to analog and then re-digitized to 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. Now, because that track gets re-digitized, it's for that reason that Apple cannot say you're hearing a pure lossless track. The source will not be an identical match. Will it still sound incredible and probably much better than what you're used to? Yeah, probably. I mean, I could be wrong. I'm still pretty convinced that the vast majority of subscribers don't have the supported hardware to take advantage of pure lossless audio right now anyways. And so this feature is more of a nice to have. And for those who truly can take advantage of it and really are considered an audiophile. As for the HomePod and HomePod mini, Apple did confirm that lossless audio would not be available for those products, but spatial audio will be. And that's perhaps the feature that's going to be a bit more noticeable to the masses. And that was also announced yesterday, which is spatial audio with Dolby Atmos. HomePods, all AirPods, and all Beats headphones with Apple's H1 or W1 chip will support the new spatial audio with Dolby Atmos feature automatically. However, any other headphones can support it once you've turned it on in your device's settings. So in theory, Artists will be able to record music that can sound like it's coming from all around you. It's similar to how this feature works within supported Apple TV shows. It's a pretty cool feature that if you haven't tried out with video, uh, you should definitely do that. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how this version of spatial audio works with supported audio tracks. Of course, I'd love to know your thoughts on everything in the comments down below. And before we end today's video, I do wanna give you more information about today's sponsor, OWC. OWC is releasing its latest product, the OWC Thunderbolt Hub, which is now available for new M1 Macs and all new Thunderbolt 3 equipped Macs that are running macOS Big Sur. The OWC Thunderbolt Hub offers the new Thunderbolt hubbing technology, which means you can have four Thunderbolt ports plus one USB port on your new Apple M1 Mac, 
Apple Intel Mac with Thunderbolt 3 or any Thunderbolt 4 PC with this compact hub. You can now connect and charge any device with a USB-C or USB-A connector. It supports up to two 4K displays or a single 5K, 6K, and even 8K display. It adds high performance storage, including NVMe solutions, and generally makes your workflow work for you by adding AV mixers, phone or tablet, even desktop accessories all through one single Thunderbolt port. The OWC Hub is available for pre-order right now, and you can pick one up by clicking the link in the description down below. This has been Darren with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.